Back with the naturopath from New Zealand. Thanks for coming back. We're still talking about the gut. We're talking about the leaky gut. And now we're going to talk about the link between leaky gut and fatigue, especially chronic fatigue. Why people get tired. Everybody gets tired, have you noticed? If you talk to the lady over the fence, she's tired. If you talk to your mother-in-law, she's tired. If you talk to your wife, she's tired. If you talk to, you know, your pet budgie or your pet goldfish, it's probably tired. Everything's tired today. Fatigue is a really big problem. It's something I've never ever experienced. Well, I have experienced it myself. I had a bit of burnout when I wrote my book, but let me just talk about fatigue in general. There are different types of fatigue, emotional fatigue, psychological fatigue, physical fatigue, sexual fatigue. You know, there are many different fatigues. If you want good energy, great energy, you need a great gut because the gut really generates health for the entire body. As soon as that digestive system takes a whack, gets a hit, it starts going down, it starts pulling the energy levels down with it. So try and understand that when you're eating food, good food that is, not crap food, but good food, it's like putting excellent fuel in your motor vehicle. You would not dare put really, really poor fuel in your, your car, your expensive Camaro or Lamborghini or Toyota Corolla, whatever you drive. You would never, ever dream of doing that. And we know by using the best fuel, we're going to get the best performance. But also, in this case, the best fuel also will make it harder for the gut to become increasingly permeable. Crappy foods, Coca-Cola, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, you know, Dunkin' Donuts and crap like that. You know, these are things that undermine the gut quite seriously. We start developing leaky gut. Stress is one of the biggest factors that really pushes that, that gut to become increasingly permeable. So we need to keep that membrane like a nice long piece of cheesecloth. You know, we need to keep that intact. There are a whole bunch of cells lining the small bowel, particularly the first, you know, section of the duodenum, or we call it the duodenum, the first section of the small bowel. So much immune activity, in, uh, in fact, 65% plus is centered in that small intestine. We have to keep that membrane in great condition. Scientists finally now starting to talk about stuff that I've talked about with patients for 30 plus years, about keeping that small bowel intact. So if we think about that cheesecloth analogy, cheesecloth has got very fine holes that only selectively allow certain particles to go through, holding others back. Your small bowel is the same. The stuff that you want to let through are amino acids, the components of proteins, which are building blocks for hormones and all the cellular, you know, most of the tissues in your body. We want to allow minerals like calcium and magnesium to get through. We want our vitamins to get through. These things are very special because they build our body up. They prevent disease. They give us the health that we're looking for. You know, this is how we can enjoy our life with robust good health. But we can only do that with a great cheesecloth. If the cheesecloth starts getting holes in it and more permeable, it's going to allow things through there which we don't want to get into the body, particularly the immune system. So as soon as the holes get bigger, they're going to allow things through like small bacterial fragments of bad bacteria, which shouldn't be in the gut in the first place. But if they're there, at least they're going to go through, you know, through the back passage. You're going to pass those out in the toilet. But if you've got that leak there, well, there could be a breach. Viruses, bad yeasts, you know, all sorts of garbage can get through that membrane, affect our immune response. And what happens? inflammation boof so the body starts recognizing bad stuff coming through the cheesecloth it's going to set up an inflammatory response because it's trying to get rid of that stuff now for all the years i've been in practice i've always maintained that leaky gut is one of the prime drivers behind autoimmune disease and i said that in an era where people didn't really understand even what leaky gut was but now science is saying that one of the biggest drivers behind autoimmunity is leaky gut hello Finally, we're getting a bit of validation here. Well into the future, it will seem that most pharmaceutical medications made today actually destroying the gut and they're undermining health, especially the antibiotics. They really, really wreck the gut. So here's a nice picture of your gut, you know, before you took antibiotics. Okay, look at this beautiful digestive system here. We've got all sorts of trees. We've got thousands of species of, of you know, this is an analogy of the rainforest. So this is a well-functioning gut. But now, we gave Mr. Jones 14 days of antibiotics, and now we've, uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, we've got this wasteland here, and, you know, there's not much left. So in the future, it will be seen that this is the fact. 
don't forget pharmaceutical medications like antibiotics they not just create problems they create they slash that leaky gut okay they wreck it they destroy it they wreck the membrane to a big degree allowing more permeability once we set up that inflammatory response the problem then is the immune system starts ramping up further and further and this is what creates the fatigue energy is going towards trying to fight you know potential pathogens in the gut as the uh, inflammatory response ramps up, so the fatigue ramps up. And unfortunately, the adrenal glands get affected as well because the, the production also of cortisol starts going up. So you'll start noticing uh, sleep, sleep difficulties, cognitive dysfunctions, brain fog. The key thing I see with leaky gut are often skin problems like acne rosacea, bad skin patches, burping, bloating, farting. These are all common ones, um, but fatigue, also, brain fog. Don't forget, brain fog is very much linked with leaky gut. Even tinnitus is linked with it, the, the funny ringing in the ear sound. Once that membrane becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and you've healed it, you'll find that the inflammatory responses will actually go down, 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 and, and they'll become less permeable. Now, how do you notice that? Well, you'll be like me. You'll have the energy of a bloody 15-year-old. I'm 60, but I've got more energy now than I had at 20. So the libido should be good. The mood should be good, the cognition should be fantastic, and the energy should be through the roof. I've got patients I've seen in their 80s with probably more energy than a lot of 30-year-olds today. Age is no bearing really on energy. Don't forget that. It's the gut health, okay? If you can get that gut health in top shape, maybe do some stool tests, maybe do a zonulin test or a lipopolysaccharide and LPS test to see if you've got these fragments in your gut. A stool test is a great start to understand what the shape of your digestive system is. It's probably like taking your new car to a mechanic and then they plug it into a computer and they can immediately analyze exactly what's wrong and they just do a few tweaks and away you go and a thousand dollars later and, and it's all good, yeah. But the stool test is the same, all right? It will give us a fantastic snapshot of that gut. It will also show us if there's inflammation. So. A stitch in time saves a lot of stitches. So if you get onto that gut problem now, see your naturopath or your medical practitioner with a natural interest in natural medicine, you can fix the leaky gut. You can fix the inflammation. You can get your energy back. It's up to you. You've only got one life. YOLO. Thanks for tuning in.